All right. Here we are working on our truck this morning. It's Sunday morning. We got a slight radiator leak. And we're getting ready to drive this turd to Bowling Green, Kentucky to Holly Ford Fest. So, we're putting a different radiator in it. Simple. We're working on the Falcon. We did re re cut the wheel well arches, made them a little bigger. Um, got the seats in it, got the steering wheel in it. It's just about ready to take for a ride and see how it does. We got one more switch to hook up for launch control RPM, which that'll be pretty simple. And then that's ready to go for a ride. Then we got our new winter beater over here we're messing with. And then we got the panel truck back we got to paint the roof. So we got a lot to do. It's a beautiful morning out here in Northeast Ohio, though. Seen a coyote this morning. First one I ever seen alive. All right, so we're gonna start by draining the coolant and getting this radiator out of this thing. See what we can come up with. All right, it's Sunday. We were supposed to be in Bowling Green, Kentucky, drag racing. Didn't happen. All it's doing is raining here, so we didn't go. I spent a week hanging out with the wife. We did a few things. We got this shitty panel truck back in here. Man, I hate this thing. We're sanding it. Note to self, if you take a job from a customer, if he doesn't know exactly what he wants, don't take it. These wishy-washy guys are way too much. Having a hard time sanding all this. It took me weeks to do the bottom. It was full of runs and all kinds of shit. It was a terrible design. This is terrible i gotta sand all this off before we paint the top half and i also got to get it done before he changes his mind again i started doing this side it's coming um we got some front fender pieces for the falcon to do the rear wheel wall arches and we got to hook up our launch control and our line lock to the same switch with the relay we'll go over how we do that but we're gonna get back to work sanding on this thing we had a week's vacation. It was really nice. Went to a zoo, did some things with the wife. Time to get back to work. So I'm gonna start sanding this. I got some things at the Harbor Freight store. I'm gonna try a few different things to speed that process up and see what happens. Um, we'll keep you informed as we go if it works. Okay, so this is what we did. We got all that metal flake paint sanded almost to the edge. And we used, well we started out using a round electric sander. When I use an air DA, I get out of control. Air file, out of control. Neither of those could get close to the edge. So I went to the old Harbor Freight and bought a square one. Got a little closer to the edge. Now I gotta make it flat and make it decent, but now I got another type of sander I got. I'm gonna try to get closer to my paint line and smooth it out a little bit more. And hopefully, this will start to come together and do what I want it to do. We're about to find out. Wish us luck. I want to get this thing out of here. I'm sick of looking at it after all these years. So we're going to try sanding it with this next device and see if it gets a little closer and does what I need it to do. All right, so we got our in primer, the parts I was worried about. This whole edge. And yeah, I use that primer you put on with a roller. Some kind of fill and sand primer. Then we'll sand her again. And this edge should be good. It's looking good. No more metal flake. Then we gotta do all this part. Then we're gonna paint the top half of this turkey. It's looking pretty good. I'm happy with it. I mean, it's not perfect. This guy started out not wanting perfect. He wanted it to look kinda like it was done 30 years ago. Then all of a sudden he wanted perfect, so. Things change and people change, I guess. It's not going to be perfect. But he's going to get what I give him because I'm tired of dicking with this truck. Now, 
We have to make a piece for a friend. My friend brought me this heater door motor cover plate thing off of his truck. And he wants me to make him one. So, we got to kind of make one of these here for his truck. I, I think it's a truck. I'm not 100% sure what it is, but we got to make one of these. So we're going to get a piece of steel and get to work on it. It's a door for inside of his pickup truck. The heater core leaked for 100 million years and it kind of is what it is right there, you know. But we can doctor it up and make it work. So we're going to make them one. Right now. So this is our rough trace we made of that piece. Now we're going to cut it out and make this happen. All right. We're going to use that little shear to cut that out. All right, we got our basic shape here. Now, we got to put this on here. We're going to go off this bottom edge here. We're going to fine tune it a little. Trim it a little more off of there. Get a little fine tuned. We got to put a couple holes in it. Then we got to transfer this piece over. But I think we got it. It's doing good. It'll be fine. So now we're going to trim it up a little more. And then we'll start transferring the holes. And I don't know if I can make that little thing. But we'll see what we can do. Now we got to transfer this. Make a couple holes and figure out what we're going to do with this thing. I'm not sure how we're going to do that little piece yet. If we're going to put it in there or just skip it. We're probably going to skip that piece because I'm not that talented. So now we're going to try to get this off of here so we can transfer it onto there. And then we're going to drill that hole and that hole and see what's happening with them. Alright, so let's try to get this little piece off of here. Okay, so we got our piece cut out. We got that piece off. We got a weld, two tack welds on there. And then it's on. And hopefully it fits good. We'll test it before we get too crazy, but it was not all the way at the end on this piece. So it should be good. We gotta drill a couple of holes in it and then stick some foamy shit on it, but I think it'll be okay. We gotta round these corners a little bit. We're gonna tack that first though before we round the corners. It's starting to rain a little, so we're gonna get the tack on. Alright, so here's our panel. We gotta flatten it out a little bit. It's got a little bit of a bend right there. We gotta drill two holes, cover it with some foam, seal, and we got it. It's not perfect by no means, but you don't even see it, so it'll work. So now we're gonna go flatten it out a little bit right there. Drill two holes and put some foam on it. Alright, so here's old rusty front fender off the Falcon. We're going to cut it along this grinded line with the plasma cutter. And that's going to give me my wheel well opening for my Falcon. Right here is one I already did. So now we're going to do the other one. And that will give us a wheel well opening for the Falcon. It's Wednesday. We've been working a shit ton of overtime. Nothing's going good at work. I'm working on a wife's golf cart. The gas tank ruptured, died, cracked. Um, a club car gas tank is a shit ton of money. These golf carts are gold with tires. 
So I bought this El Cheapo gas tank from some place in Lima, Ohio makes them. I don't know. I found them online. It was cheap. So we're going to make it fit this club car golf cart. The original one was five and a half gallons or something like that. This one is four gallons. So last year I had to put a new clutch on it. That clutch was like 60 bucks. The gas tank is like $300. This gas tank was 60 bucks. So we gotta make the straps work a little different. And the fuel pump's gonna be mounted in a different spot, but I think we'll be able to make it work. Whoa. With a little bit of effort. Hopefully. So we're going to see what we can do with mounting the back and then the front and remounting the fuel pump. Alright, well, we got the golf cart back in business. We got the gas tank mounted, the fuel pump. It's a little redneck, but... It ain't going nowhere. We put gas in it. It starts up. It does its thing. Jill's golf cart is up and going. She will be happy. She'll be coming to an event near you and the little golf cart. And those people that know us, we beat the living shit out of this thing. This golf cart has been abused. Extremely abused. It's chased puppies. It's chased floods. It's been tipped on its side almost. And it was dug out of a junkyard on its side in a ditch. That's where it came from. Um, it's had a rough life. Hopefully, we'll be putting a switch in the Falcon. That's the goal. We're going to see how that goes. And then we got to work on this thing, but we might be going to the races this weekend if I get the Falcon going. I don't know if we're working on it tomorrow or not. It's nice to be back in business doing things. Uh, vacation's over. So, time to get some stuff done. And man, somebody out here is barbecuing up a storm. Man, does it smell good. But... I'm gonna get ready to go. Take this thing home. And get it unloaded. I don't know if I'll get it unloaded tonight, but in the next couple of days, it'll be off of here onto the big trailer. Might bring it here tomorrow. I don't know. All right. We're messing with the Falcon today. Getting ready to go to the Jack's Wax Halloween thing at National Trails. We're going to mess with all of that. We're going to make the roll control. I'm sorry. Launch RPM and line lock on the same button. With the help of a relay. Then we're going to take this thing for a ride. Check tire pressure. And try to figure out why it won't go straight. If it's just us or if it's the car. Mike will be here in a little while. We're going to see what we can come up with on this thing. Hopefully something good. Hopefully we can get it figured out. And maybe the gas pedal. I don't care for the seats either, but it is what it is. Got to have a headrest, I was told. So I have a headrest. It's uncomfortable as hell for a fat guy, but it is a headrest. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to get my knee pad, my gate... My test light. See which one on the line lock is positive. And then the other one goes out to the line lock. And then we're going to see the other two wires. Which one goes over to the ignition box and which one goes to a ground. I believe one is hot and one is ground. <clears throat> Alright, so this one is power in this one is out to the line lock they go to these two these two are for the button that was launch rpm that's those two wires over there 
One comes from the ignition box and one goes to a ground. So we're gonna take this fancy relay system we put together and run it out to everything and use the ground to power the line lock through the relay and the ignition box ground at the same time with a diode this is a diode it'll only let power come this way out to the ground <clears throat> it will not back feed to the ignition box if something happens to the relay the line lock or anything um, we got another fuse for the relay which will go to the power wire this wire up under there that wire will no longer come across there <clears throat> It'll be powered. This will this will plug into the wire going out to the line lock. This ground wire here will go to one side of the switch wires, and the other side will go over to the chassis ground. So that when you push the button on the red knob it'll ground it out ground this one out and this one out closing the relay activating the line lock and giving me ground for my launch RPM I hope that's the plan now I gotta get my fat ass under that dash and get busy all right, Mike's driving the Falcon so I can look at the rear wheels. We're not sure what the hell it's doing. So we're going to see what it's doing. It's Friday. Tomorrow we're going to the Jack's Wax Halloween show at National Trails. We're taking the Falcon. We got to drain our reservoir, top off our water, do a quick little nut and bolt check, tighten up our fan belt. It's a little loose. Um, we got to jack up the front end. We got to go over a little bit in the front end here. Check our tie rods, ball joints. We got to check the oil. We haven't checked the oil since we put this thing in. I hope it don't need no oil. That'll suck. No, the oil's good. We got plenty of oil. Yesterday, we hooked up that um, switch inside. And it worked out really good. But I got to redo it today. So we're having a little bit of a problem. Um, inside the car, we hooked up the line lock and the launch limiter on the same button. Works great. I mean, fabulous. The only problem we're having, the limiter, is not enough RPMs to do a burnout. It wants to push through the wheels. I need a higher RPM. <clears throat> So I think I'm going to hook the line, the rev limiter wire to this toggle switch so that I can turn it on and off. When I do a burnout, I'll shut it off. That way this will only control the line lock. And then when I turn it back on, it'll be the limiter for launch. And if I forget to turn it on, I'll just have to manually set the launch. It won't be a very big deal. I hope. That's the plan, at least. 
we'll see how that works i got to get the throttle pedal i don't like that angle i'm gonna see if i can adjust that rod a little longer out under the hood to get the pedal to go at a better angle um i gotta start it up run it out of gas and check that after i finish the water and tighten the belt and then i gotta check the front end and do my switch and tuck the wires up a little bit better and then i gotta take this thing to a vacuum cleaner and wash it and get it ready for the weekend give it a good scrub it's filthy i've had this car for over a year did i did the midwest drags in it took it to some races some shows and i've never actually washed this car with soap and water never Either this evening or tomorrow will be the first time it's ever been washed with soap and water. So, let's see what we got to do to tighten up this belt here. We're going to need a couple of wrenches and a pry bar. It looks like half inch, nine sixteenths, I'm guessing. Loosen it up. Put a little bar in there, tighten it. We gotta top off the water. We drained our overflow, so that's good to go. Distributor's tight, timing's good. Everything's good other than a couple little things. All right, we got a nine. Oh, that's a lot bigger. That's probably a five eighths or 11 sixteenths. And we got a half inch. Let's see what fits this piece of junk. Well, that one's a ways down in there, huh? It ain't that. There it is. All right, we got an array of wrenches and sockets and all kinds of good stuff here. Let's see. Perfect. We're going to loosen this one up a little bit. There we go. Now. Falcon problems. Let's put some water in this thing before we get a bunch of shit down in that cat. May not have enough. I may have to get some more. I only have a little bit of water. It's usually not very really low. It usually pumps some in this thing. In the overflow, it doesn't really use water per se. And there we go. It's full again. Not even a quarter of a cup. There's our water. Caps back on all the way. Now we can tighten up our fan belt. We gotta loosen up this 916th a little bit down here. She was pretty tight. There we go. I don't know if we can get that with this or not. I don't really want to pry a whole lot on the water pump. Let's see what we can do here. That, that tightened her up pretty good. So, I'm guessing all you're seeing in your video is my fat hands. But, tightening up this fan belt a little, it squealed when you first started it a little bit. Let's 
so if we put a little tightening to it, she should not squeal no more. That should take care of that. Next step will be our wiring inside the car. And then we got to look at the front end. Yesterday, we looked at the back end. And we looked at, I forget what else we looked at. Oh, the switch. So inside of here, this is what we got to do. We got to spin this switch around. Right now, down is auto, middle is off, up is manual, because the switch is turned upside down. This right here used to be a burnout rev limiter. We're not using that. I gotta clean all that shit off of there. We're only using one rev limiter right here. I gotta put a plug in the floor. Smoke's gonna come through that hole and cause all kinds of goddamn problems. Put the center console back in. File these sharp points a little bit right there and right there. They hurt your hand when you beat on it a little. The gas pedal. We're gonna mess with the gas pedal next because that's pretty intense repair I need to do here. So before we get too excited, we're gonna put it in neutral, start it up, run it out of gas, and check full throttle and the gas pedal. I dread crawling my fat ass up under that dash. I'm not taking the seat out again. That's just not happening. So we're gonna figure out how to do it without taking the seat out. But first we're gonna run it out of gas and check the gas pedal because I do not like the angle of that gas pedal. It's pointed too high for me. So we're gonna start it up. Shut the fuel pump off, run out most of the gas, and then we're going to see if we can make this a little longer in order to compensate some for full throttle. If we can, perfect. And then we gotta start getting ready to go beat on this turkey some. So we're gonna do a cold start. I, I see a lot of people do cold start videos. So now it's my turn. We're gonna do a cold start on the Falcon. It doesn't take much to start this thing. Let's open the trunk, turn the key on. This car, I don't know if I spilled it in it or what, permeated the floor somewhere. It smells like burnt transmission fluid. The key's off. Um, so, Falcon cold start. We have the neutral safety hooked up, so you gotta make sure it's in neutral. Probably gonna have to give it a little bit of gas. Maybe not. Yep. She's gonna take a little bit. We'll give her a pump or two. I think the water pump is on manual right now, cause it's running. 
There, now it's on automatic. There she is. Put our fat foot in here. Work the gas pedal a little bit. He's a cold blooded sucker. pump off charging at 14.5 almost 60 pounds of oil pressure she's running really lean and rich and lean and rich but it's cold that usually straightens out once it warms up No more squeaking belt. It's got a couple header leaks. It's almost out of gas. All right. Here we are. Messing with thread, said throttle. All right, so we took the nut off. We got this side off. We got, this is loose. We're gonna see how far in this thread so that we can see how far out we can bring it safely. So it threads in pretty good. So I can tell you right now, I'm gonna put this right about there. Tighten this side up. Let's get our wrench, pull this forward. Loosen this up. And let's. All right. There we go. We're back in business. So, I'm gonna try to get this to come out. Boy, that baby's threaded in there pretty freaking good. That's why it has those scratches on it, huh? Let's see what we can find. A little pair of channel locks or something here real quick. Channel locks. All right, back in business here. Let's see if we can get this to come out soon. I think that's out. It looks like it's out.
that ought to be pretty good. There we go. Put that in there, that in there, that in there, that up there. We gotta get the nut and put on it. And then we gotta tighten it up <clears throat> and see how we are. Hopefully, I mean, it's not super tight, it still goes to full throttle. But that gave us a lot more. That probably moved the pedal a half an inch or so. So let's tighten this up. Not too tight. We don't want it to wiggle that way. Well, that thing should be a little bit snugger. There we go. To give this a little bit of a snug. Now, we gotta give this one a little bit of a snug. No problem. Car's probably flooded now, though, after that. pretty high. It's a little bit better though. Alright. I'm still not happy with it. So we're going to try it again. that one out some more. We're not going to flood it again. But we're going to try to move this one here out some more. It's easier with the bolt in it. To move it out a lot. Thing's going to be a bitch to start when I put it back together. There we go. Let's get this washer out of here we dropped. Okay, come on, Bessie. Get back in there. There we go. Put that back in there. Put that back in there. That back on there. That back on there. Another quarter of an inch or so. I think that's it. 
and see how this looks. That's it. The only other thing to do is cut that rod off and shorten it, but then that's gonna raise it back up. So we're to the end. Now we gotta try to get this thing to start and run again. A lot of play. I don't like all that play. There we go. There. Alright, throttle's taken care of, water's taken care of, oil's taken care of, no leaks. We gotta do our switches. Our Sharpie and check the front end. So, as of right now, we are going to move to the inside. But we're going to start it up first. And then we're going to mess with our two switches. So, let's put our tools back. Let's see if she'll start. She's probably pretty flooded right now. She's probably really flooded right now, actually. Let's see how this gas pedal looks. Oh, that looks a lot better. She's in neutral. We gotta put a screw in that thing too. That's gonna piss me off. She's flooded, but she started. She's out of gas. There we go. She needs a bath. All right, we're gonna get our fat butt in there and do them two switches and then do the front end.
All right, people. Let me just tell you, the struggle is real. I'm not taking the seats out no more. So I had to make myself a makeshift hillbilly creeper to get under there and do that switch and those wires. Hopefully this will sort of work. That's the plan at least. So I'm gonna get in there and do that switch and that switch and put the center console back, check out the front end and this thing is done. All right, we got her all back together. We got to put the console back in it. We're going to take this baby to the scales and see what she weighs. I'm going to guess 35. That hitch is 100 pounds almost, but we're going to see what it weighs on the scale. We got our spark plugs in that hunk of shit. We'll see what this weighs. 